Good morning, viewers, subscribers, Kingdom Saints. We're about to have Bible study here today, this morning. <clears throat> I hope everybody's having a blessed morning. Let me adjust my camera here. Our topic, our Bible study is finishing the race. Running this race, finishing the race. Because I know it gets hard, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. But we still struggle with sin. We still struggle with everyday things that come up on us, you know what I'm saying? And the way we handle it is, we give it all to the Lord and let Jesus handle all of our burdens, you know what I'm saying? Because he's not only our savior, he's not only our redeemer, he's not only our rock, our foundation, he's also our counselor. He's the one we go to when we, when we just can't do what he would do. <clears throat> we go to him and he does it for us. We put all our faith and trust in him and give him everything, no matter what we go through. You know what I'm saying? It's um, the only way we can resist the temptations and not fall into sin again and not go back to our world is, is by renewing our faith, having a renewed mind every day, not just sometimes, not just when we get baptized. Every day. Because each and every day that goes by, Satan roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And yes, he attacks us first. He attacks us the most. It's bad enough that he hates God's creation. He hates man and woman. What he hates the most, besides God, of course, but what he hates most about creation is men and women walking in Christ. Christians, yes. So, yeah, yeah, I know it gets hard, but you just got to be strong and be strong in Christ. Let's go to scriptures. Psalms 119, verse 32 tells us, I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, your heart belongs, to, your heart is the heart of, you have the heart of Jesus now. You have the heart of Jesus. And what does enlarge my heart? When thou enlarge my heart, when my faith and my Jesus is always and forevermore. <clears throat> he enlarges our hearts. We have full, complete knowledge and understanding of Jesus and what he's done for us, what he's doing for us, and what he's going to do for us. He enlarges our hearts. He gives us wisdom. He gives us patience. He gives us understanding. He gives us the, the, the one thing that hurts hard for everybody in this world. He gives us the grace of forgiveness, how to forgive, because people don't want to forgive. That's why there's so many fights and battles and wars. Let's go to the next scripture. First Corinthians 9, 24. Know ye that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. See, every time I um, go through stuff, get tempted. It goes in here. It doesn't linger too long and it goes out there because I keep in my heart and my mind and in my soul wise, which is Christ Jesus and life with him eternally being with God the Father, and all the kingdom of God, 
where there would be no sorrows, no pain, no tears, nothing but rejoicing in happiness and worshiping and praising the Lord. That's what I think about. That's the prize. That is the prize. That's what you have to have on your mind every day when you're walking in Christ and when temptations fall upon you because there is no greater prize than Jesus. Next scripture is, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat at the ear. We don't fight with uncertainty. We fight with assurance because we have assurance from the Lord. We have the promises of God. So I don't fight as one that beat at the ear. You know, when you're beating, fighting, the beating, beating, you're punching at the ear, you're punching at nothing. You're just wasting your time. It's a wasted effort. You're punching at nothing. You're punching, you're beating the ear. You know what I'm saying? That's nothing. That's what you, that's what these people in the world do that are living in darkness. Because they strive for nothing and they obtain nothing. They miss the prize. They don't get the prize. They think they get their prizes right here on earth while they're living. But scriptures say, store not your treasures in this world. Store up your treasures in heaven. Amen. Let's go to our next scriptures. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. God knows we're going to sin. He knows we're going to sin. He expects us to sin. But we don't sin repetitively and we don't live in intermittent sin. We don't sin on purpose. We don't go out and sin and, and just take God's grace for granted and just use and abuse His grace like most people in the world are doing right now. We don't sin on purpose. We don't, we don't live to sin. We live for Jesus. But yes, He knows we're going to sin. You know what I'm saying? Sooner or later, we're going to sin. Say the bad word or or, or have an unforgiving heart or, 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 or just be hateful sometimes. But we go through stuff like that. But we ask God to forgive us and we're already forgiven by the blood. Jesus did everything at the cross. But yes, we are forgiven. And yes, we don't sin on purpose. We, um, we, we patiently, patiently await for the arrival of Jesus. And we patiently await the end of this race and the beginning of our new life with him in heaven. Let's go to our next scriptures. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and to sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is our mediator. Jesus is our mediator, our counselor, our best friend. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. The author of our faith. Because he was, he is, and he is to come. And the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. Our faith began since the beginning of this world. Amen. But Adam and Eve disobeyed. And now we have a second chance because Jesus became the second Adam. The second Adam to take everything in this world that we've done, every 
we sin all of mankind's sins upon his torn and persecuted and battered body so that we can have a chance at redemption so we can have what Adam and Eve were supposed to have. He wants us to have paradise. See, God made Adam and Eve to live forever in paradise and to worship him. And he gave them everything that they needed to be happy in, in the world and to rejoice and to praise him and, and to survive and, and to just have nothing but joy and happiness. There were no tears until Satan came along and took everything away. Amen. That's his main mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Let's go to our next scripture. Romans 5 3. Romans 5 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations are wicked patience. That's right, we count tribulations, we count it all as joy. Everything we go through in this world, we count it all as joy. You know what I'm saying? Because we have the joy of Jesus, and we know that when He comes, we have endured, we have withstood the tribulations of this world. We will, we will have our crowns. We will have the most prized treasures which is Christ Jesus. We have finished the race. And Jesus will say to us, Job well done, my humble servant. Job well done, enter ye into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And tribulation will get patience because we have to be patient, patient in this world. We have to be patient and wait for Jesus to come. But the thing is, we already know what to look for, what to look out for, because it tells us so in the Revelations. Everything is explained, not just in Revelations, but in the whole Bible, in all of the Bible. Everything from beginning to end is explained in the Bible. The Bible is basic instructions before leaving Earth. Let's go to our next scripture, shall we? Romans 5, 3, Romans 5, 4. Patience, experience, and experience hope. With the patience comes experience because when you're patient and we have patience, patience in this world, you go through hardships, you go through joy, you go through sorrow. That gives you experience and knowledge. Amen. And where the experience comes hope. The hope of Jesus. The hope of eternal life. The hope of the crown. Amen. The hope of the crown of life. The crown of righteousness. There's lots of crowns that people are going to be receiving. Those who remain faithful. Because scripture says, even the elect shall be, might be deceived. Amen. What's our next scripture here? Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. They shall mount up with wings as the eagles. Hallelujah. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Amen. You can't be weak in the kingdom of God. Jesus will give you his might. Jesus said, Lay your burdens on me. Lay your burdens on me. I will give you rest. He said, I am an overcomer. So are you. 
is you have the strength of Jesus. You can do anything to Christ who strengthens you. You know what I'm saying? There's no such, no such thing as I can't. No such thing as I can. You can do everything and anything to Christ who strengthens you. We shall renew our strength. We shall mount up with wings as eagles. When you're at your lowest, that's when you're at your strongest. God will give you the strength. He will bring you out of it. Amen. What's our next scripture? Isaiah, Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto, even unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure to, until the end, the same shall be saved. If you have your faith in Christ Jesus, strengthened, and you finish the race until the end, until he comes, you shall be saved. You will be saved. You are saved. Amen. You are chosen. Let's go to Second Timothy 4, 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of the evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. Do God's will in your life. And do what he has called you to do according to his purpose. You know what I'm saying? He has called people to do different things, you know what I'm saying? So, whatever it is that God has called you to do, do it with joy. And do it with, 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 with rejoicing and do it with happiness. And do it out of love. Love. What's our next scripture? Our next scripture is 2 Timothy 4, 6. For I am now ready to be offered at the time of my departure with that hand. Just like Paul said. Just like Paul said. Because he knows. And he knew that his time was at hand, especially when he went to Rome. You know, Paul was beheaded. But the apostles kept on preaching. Peter was crucified. And out of respect for Jesus, he has to be crucified upside down. But the gospel was still being preached throughout the nations. Philip was stoned to death. But the gospel was still being preached throughout the nations. All the apostles had been murdered. And the gospel is still being preached throughout the, all the nations. And when every ear has heard the word of God, this is the time when Jesus comes. This is the time when the Holy Spirit leaves the earth. Because when the Holy Spirit leaves the earth, we are no longer on probation. And there is no hope for grace. There is no hope for redemption. There is no hope for salvation and eternal life with Christ Jesus. This is why I always stress that you must come to Jesus today because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen in half an hour. You know what I'm saying? When Jesus comes and the Holy Spirit leaves the earth, nobody's going to have the grace of God anymore. He's just going to come and we're going to... We're just going to be... We're going to meet Him in the air. The first fruits and those that remain will meet Jesus in the year. Amen. 
Timothy 4-7 is our next one. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. I want to hear every Christian say these exact words when Jesus comes. Because it's emotional. It's, it's deep. It's fulfilling. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. These are the words of somebody who is victorious and is an overcomer. Amen. Let's go to Galatians 5, 7. You did one well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? We know the answer to that. Satan is always trying to hinder us. Actually, he's trying to hinder all of creation. And he has succeeded in certain areas. But don't let anything or anyone hinder you. Finish this race. Amen. Because when you finish this race, you're going to see Jesus face to face. He's going to give you a warm embrace. And he's going to take you with him to his heavenly place. Am I right about it? What's our next scripture, Galatians? Oh, that's it. That's our next scripture. I mean, that's the last one. So anyway, just keep in mind, whoever ever, ever, I said ever, feel that you're weak because you have the power to trample the enemy said every day with your feet. It is Jesus that gives you his might. It is Jesus that gives you sight. You are no longer blind and you no longer walk in darkness, you see, because Jesus has given you victory. You have overcome everything in this world because you walk with Jesus and he took away your sin. So continue to walk with Jesus and let him live within. Amen, amen. Let the truth say amen. Y'all don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah. All right, my kingdom saints, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, we are all under one faith, one baptism, one God. And for all donations, you can donate to our ministry. There's my cash app. And, and anybody in the DMV area, DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia, if you'd like to join our ministry and come out and evangelize with us and do fellowship and outreach, you can email me at Latin Poet for Christ, right there. And, um, I love you all, my, my kingdom family. Thanks for watching.